let me pray for you multiplied visions and spiritual experiences i still believe that the best of the year for me is still to come i truly believe god has done things that has brought tears out of my eyes but i believe for myself that between now and december 31st i'm yet to see the hand of god so but i want to encourage us even as we begin to set the pace if you will be there you can write you know gone are the days where people in in a false show of humility they say we don't know whether we can see tomorrow is a lie don't, don't let any man um bring that nonsense around your table no. you can believe there are scriptures that authenticate the quality of your life the longevity of your life and the problem is that we come from environments that sociologically condition us to defeat thank you jesus i want to give you a few things that the lord put in my heart to encourage us really this is this is what i'm here to do this night and then a few other things that god will grant us grace to do now most believers are not taught the relevance of a retreat we teach fasting we teach prayer but very few believers have been taught as a corporate doctrine not just a time out away from people but a retreat that you end and begin seasons in your life in the presence of god it is risky to end and begin seasons in your life in the flesh the most spiritual aspect of your life should be when seasons are ending and when seasons are beginning because that's when satan gets at people when the when when the seasons have been cleared up and you're moving it's difficult for satan to derail you are we together now so it is very very important every one of us must make sure that we use this one month that we're having and take out at least a few days for a quality retreat now there are different kinds of retreats we have our workers retreat as a ministry there are all kinds of retreats families have their retreats but this retreat i'm talking about is a retreat when you are exclusively alone with god not even husband and wife not even father and children no there are certain things god will never tell you in public there are certain things that you will only hear from god when you are alone with him are we together it is it is a very deep and simple spiritual mystery that guarantees victory many believers have not paid attention to it retreats very important end of year retreats very important you must take out time end of year retreat cannot be done in a few hours that is laziness you didn't have a retreat you just had a quiet time a retreat should be at least minimum two solid days you can't spend one day one day alone should be dedicated to thanksgiving is god speaking to us so every single one of us and those following online we must take out time to have personal retreats what are the activities that should happen in the retreats number one thanksgiving your end of year retreat is barren of god's power until you begin and lavishly communicate thanksgiving thanksgiving what we did here tonight is just a representation the same way you spend a night vigil praying and putting your needs you must thank god mention them one by one let me tell you i know this about god he never gets tired hearing people thank him lord thank you thank you you gave me tea thank you last year it was without blue band you added blue band this year so you observed it 
You see that? Not Lord, you thank you for the food you gave me. That's a careless thanksgiving. Father, thank you. Last year it was tap water. Now you gave me bottled water. Thank you. That means you are careful. You are forgetting not his benefits. When it comes to requests, we are very meticulous. Lord, give me one, two, three, four. Then when it comes to thanksgiving, we say, Lord, even me, I can't remember. Are you not God? Don't you know everything? I, I just thank you for everything. Let's go to another prayer request. And God says, how selfish. Selfish. When you thank God, mention things one by one. Lord, thank you. I was on my way to Kaduna and the car wanted to capsize. You saved me. Thank you. And God said, ah, this happened January. He said, Lord, I didn't forget. You are too faithful for me to forget that event. He said, you remember this for me? Get ready for another dimension. Thanksgiving. Write it down. Thanksgiving. We must take out quality time to thank him. Number two. I'm teaching you how to maximize to set the pace to maximize your retreat what do you do during your personal retreat review your progress for the current year that's what you do you sincerely honestly unashamedly review the year And I'll dwell here a bit to help us understand. I want all of us to really understand these things. The second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year. And you don't just review the year carelessly. You break your review into six different units. Write it down. The first area is your spiritual life. You review your spiritual life. Review your passion for God review the illumination of the word that you have accessed what do you know now that you did not know last year what do you understand now that you did not understand last year review your character create a scale for it can i say i am improving not just in the knowledge of god am i useful to society am i becoming a leader am i becoming a person of character so your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review let me tell you something about retreats you must be honest you see why you have to be alone excuse me you must be honest you must be unashamed you must be very sincere before god number two mental development and your capacity you review that area did i cooperate with the word of god to develop my mind did I acquire useful informations that will set me on the cutting edge of relevance? Did I just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die? Are we together now? Yes, it matters that we not only grow spiritually, but we sustain the ability to be useful. We must be able to communicate the life of Christ to our environment. So you review it. What books did I read? What do I know about leadership? Did I learn anything? Did I build my mind? What do I know about mindsets? Am I still carrying my village in my head, moving around with it? Am I still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure? Am I still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life? Is God helping us? Number three, review how much you have taken care of your body, your health. In a retreat? Yes, sir. That's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when because the only person you really have offended is God this body belongs to him for some of us it has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health wise is that true review oh this year Lord I apologize I ate anyhow I did all kinds of things anyhow destroyed my body why do you make these reviews? Because you need this body to last very long. Are we together? Gone are the days when 
people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life and you see someone of 32 looking like 50 they ask him how old are you he said i will be 33 next year say what's well, so why are you looking at a condition make crayfish bed no you are not a crayfish you are created in the image and the likeness of god some of those sayings we must start getting them out of the body of christ they look very nice but these are the things that authorize Satan to destroy our lives. Hallelujah. Your health. And some of us, it is not even poverty. It's carelessness. Write that word down. This is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat. Many people's lives are destroyed, including their health, because of one word. Carelessness. Unattentiveness to details. Hallelujah. Number four, review your assignment. The reason for which God brought you. Review your purpose. Your kingdom service. These are things that you review at a time of retreat. Lord, I look at the compass of my destiny. Did I make progress this year? Can I say from prophecy to manifestation i have moved forward you see this assignment and purpose thing you, you you hardly even hear it again people don't talk about it it says lo i come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will the reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose if purpose does not occupy you anybody can call you any day and say are you free sir yes come and follow me somewhere god designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment this idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose and then the recent um i would say trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward motions like sitting on a rocking chair the chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress oftentimes jesus would retreat and look okay i must be here i must be there your assignment your purpose I don't know my purpose but you can look at your service in the house of God use that as a template what was your level of commitment what was your level of diligence are we together very important this is what I do during my retreats number four the fourth area number what number five I beg your pardon your finance write it down your finances you have to flog it out in the secret place are we together now you've looked at your spiritual life mental transformation your body your health is that true and then your assignment then your finances we're very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance i'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life i've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost it's not just bad it's a cost it's one of the most distracting strategies of satan when a man spends all your life looking for money it's a cost nobody was ever designed to do that what time then do you have in building this chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of satan has made us to leave our purpose there are people called as prophets and apostles but they only realize one week to their death they spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it please let me say it again and again do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life. There is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuit priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right. So this is very important. 
review because for some of us our whole lives is built around money money and we never get it you talk two minutes money everything money you say jesus the person replies back with money 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 every time you have to review is that true hmm. was i able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year or i just had it and it didn't work you will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately immediately so you must be sincere this year god gave me one million naira god gave me hundred thousand naira what did i do with it ah i made a mistake i gave hundred thousand naira to four one niners you don't jump that what is the lesson that i have to learn there is that true god gave me two hundred thousand I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who are not interested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't say it's all right. Ask for forgiveness because that is sin. Is that true? When God gives you resources and you waste it, if nobody has told you it is sin, believe me. Lord, I gave you offering of 10, 10 Naira. I gave you offering of 20, 20 Naira. But my average dinner was 2,000 Naira. It's a sign that you are not a serious believer. I know you think, I'm not talking about money. You know that God has helped us. But it's important. These are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God. And that includes with your resources. All this 10, 10 Naira giving. You know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. Are we not Bible students? He that soweth sparingly, what is sparingly? Small, scanty, shall reap, but he shall reap scanty. That's why you get one testimony in four months. Correct? You are reaping. But he that soweth bountifully, lavishly, extravagantly, he said he will reap. The Bible said that scriptures cannot be broken. So don't say that it does not matter. It could be a time for you. I remember it was in one of my retreats, honestly speaking, that the Lord challenged me on this. The level of giving was far less than the level of God's blessing on my life. And the Lord rebuked me. And I made up my mind and I made a vow. There is a minimum amount I will never give as offering again forever till Jesus comes yes it's true it's true it's true so review it what do you understand about finances review it if all you know about finances is business and job is better you have to sit down and flog that area because neither of them in themselves will give you money number six relationships the sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships marital relationships career relationships business relationships destiny relationships some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations associations that should have nothing nothing to do with our lives is all this uh, is our tribe is our church is our this is that true the bible says he that works with the wise will be wise but it says the companion of fools will be destroyed relationships it matters review them review them who did you give access to this year whose presence destroyed your productivity who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life? Some of you, your relationship here, you even need to go back and check with the Holy Spirit. What degree of access did you give him? 
relationships now when you review these six areas let me be honest with you your entire life revolves around these six areas your spiritual life your mental development your health and physical well-being is that true your assignment your career whatever it is your financial resources and your relationships there is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area usually what i do is that i scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area and i must answer why i won't just say i will improve why why was this the best and why was this the worst if your relationships for inside for instance was the worst this year what don't i know about friendship what have i not learned maybe i'm neglecting honor maybe i'm not valuable enough maybe i'm too much of a talkative maybe i'm not somebody who can be committed secret maybe i'm somebody who is not friendly maybe i'm someone who is jealous lord help me you write it down are you seeing how people grow in retreat you never come out of that experience the same no sir people jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again and you see the bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin if your wine skin is old nothing new will ever come you will have to replace that wine skin like a snake molting shedding off the old skin so that there can be room for expansion he said go and borrow vessels borrow the wine skin borrow not a few and the more the wine skin the more capacity for the anointing to function you want to receive jesus as your lord and personal savior can you repeat these words after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I declare that you are the son of God. You came into the world and you died. On the third day, you rose again. I believe in the resurrection. Holy Spirit, fill my heart now. I receive eternal life because I have been washed right now with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for saving me. I declare you are my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you right now. That you are establishing God. You are kept in God. The God who is able to keep you from falling. Will sustain you the rest of your life.